Alright. So kita pergi kepada uh, Okay. Extractions of metal from its ore. Okay, apa itu ore ataupun biji? Most metals found naturally as a mineral in the form of compounds such as oxide, sulfides, chloride and carbonate. Okay. So, cikgu nak tanya kat kamu, kalau compound tu dia ada oxide, mean dia ada elemen apa? Kita revise balik. If the uh, compound tu dia contain oxide, mean what element contain? Contohlah cikgu bagi kamu aluminium oxide. So, what elements contain in aluminium oxide? Anyone respond? Very simple question. Okay, oxygen. And kalau aluminium oxide means dia ada oxygen dengan aluminium. Very good. So, oxide ni means ada elemen oxygen. How about sulfide? If cikgu kata uh, uh, potassium sulfide. Okay, sulfide maksudnya ada apa? Sulfate. Ada, ada sulfate tu maksudnya apa? Ada sulfur, ada oksigen. Kalau chloride means dia ada elemen. Kalau chloride means ada elemen klorin. Bagus. Kalau kab and carbonate, <coughs> if carbonate, carbon and carbonate, carbonate, carbon and, betul one more. Kalau carbonate, oksigen. Very good. Alright, so this one is uh, examples of metals or kita ada aluminium. So kalau dia jadi ores, dia adalah aluminium oxide. Uh, nama lain dia adalah bauxit. Iron, kalau dia dalam bentuk ores, nama dia adalah iron tree oxide atau nama lain dia hematit. And tin, chemical compound, dia adalah tin 4 oxide. Oh, nama lain dia adalah citrate. Kamu form 3 dah belajar dah benda-benda ni. Okay, now they tell you the method to extract metals from its ore. So for your information, actually we have two method to extract metal from its ore. Ingat, dia ada dua method. We have two method. So macam mana kita nak tahu, oh this metal using this method. This uh, metal using this uh, method. So tengok eh. It depends on the position. Okay, the, the keyword here is positions of metal in a reactivity series. So if the metal is more reactive, contoh dalam gambar dekat bawah ni, let's say lah magnesium, dia akan extract guna electrolysis method. Gariskan mana uh, keyword dekat situ. So kalau more reactive, kita guna electrolysis. And if the metal is less reactive, alright, kita akan extract uh, by method apa? Reduction by using carbon. So first using electrolysis method, second reducing using carbon. So macam ni kita nak tahu, oh metal ini guna electrolysis. This uh, metal guna uh, reduction by carbon. So kamu tengok, kalau kamu kamu dah hafal the arrangement of metal in the reactivity series, mana-mana metal yang the position is above carbon, okay, Atas daripada karbon ni semua guna kaedah elektrolisis. While kalau below karbon start from zinc until copper kita guna uh, reduction using karbon. So is it okay everyone? Can you differentiate which one yang guna elektrolisis, yang mana guna karbon boleh ya? So if boleh cikgu nak proceed boleh ya? Alright. So now remark here for your information nampak je macam tak penting tapi sebenarnya banyak point dekat perkataan remark ni. Okay kenapa kita kalau boleh kita nak avoid lah guna elektrolisis pertama sebab dia adalah uh, very costly process. Dia menggunakan bahan-bahan uh, yang mahal, method dia mahal. So the cost of extracting metal using carbon is cheaper. Kalau soalan tanya. Kalau soalan tanya, yang mana lebih better? Uh, okay, lepas tu reason kenapa? So, ini reason dia. Pertama, kalau kita guna reduction using carbon, first sebab carbon tu harga dia lebih murah, cheaper. Second, carbon bila dia release carbon dioxide gas after reaction. Okay. Ketiga, kenapa kita tak boleh guna hydrogen? Kenapa kita jarang guna hydrogen untuk extraction of metal? Kenapa kita banyak guna carbon? Sebab apa? Okay, point number three because uh, 
Hydrogen boleh reduce metal oxide tapi dia dia lebih costly. Dia lebih mahal berbanding dengan carbon. So that's why lah hydrogen is not used widely for extraction purpose. Okay now next we go to the next page. Alright. Uh, for silver and gold, kalau kamu tengok no extraction for silver and gold because of what these two Dia adalah least reactive metals and dia adalah free metals in earth Dia tidak bertindak balas dengan elemen lain Means dia uh, hidup secara uh, unsur, okay, secara unsur Dia tidak, dia bukan compound, dia adalah uh, elemen Okay, what is extractions of metal? So, apa itu extraction sebenarnya? The metal that are very reactive, okay, means they are placed at the top position in reactivity series. Extract by their compound by electrolysis. Okay, so kalau soalan tanya what, uh, kalau soalan SPM tanya definition of extraction of metal. So, inilah dia. Metal that are more reactive, Okay, are extracted from their compound by electrolysis. Okay, ini adalah bagaimana kita nak describe the extractions of aluminium from bauxite, a mineral that consists of aluminium oxide. Sebelum cikgu explain ni, kamu tengok dulu gambar bagaimana, ah, ni, muka surat seterusnya, page 65. Inilah electrolysis of aluminium. Beginilah kaedahnya. Inilah diagram dia. This one is electrolysis, eh. To extract uh, aluminium from aluminium, Oxide. So kita ada uh, bekas ni. So bekas ni made from the carbon and substance that ni also carbon rod, carbon electrode. Kita dip into the uh, electrolyte. So substance X ni adalah electrolyte yang kita gunalah iaitu uh, ore dia iaitu aluminium oxide. Okay. Yang ni carbon ni, yang substance Z ni carbon, substance Y ni pun carbon, cuma satu anode, satu ketod. Okay, substance W ni adalah pure aluminium yang kita dah extract. Okay. Sambil cikgu explain dekat atas, boleh tengok gambar. Okay, tengok ya. So, aluminium, okay, kita cerita pasal aluminium ni. So, aluminium is extracted from its ore bauxite which contain aluminium oxide. Maksudnya, all for aluminium is aluminium oxide. Impurities such as silica and oxides of iron are separated from bauxite at a higher temperature. Nak bagi tahu kamu, selain daripada aluminium oxide, all tu sendiri ada apa tahu? Ada Al2O3. Dia ada juga nampak ni, silica and dia juga ada oxides of iron. Iron oxide lah. Fe2O3. So first step, tiga-tiga ni dia akan uh, panaskan guna high temperature supaya these two boleh separate. Faham? Faham? Setakat ni, actually dalam ore tu ada tiga benda ni. Okay, dalam aluminium ore tu, uh, aluminium oxide ni termasuk ni sekali. So first guna high temperature, kita dah remove silica dengan iron oxide. Alright, then kita dapat pure bauxite eh, ni, tinggal yang ni, aluminium oxide. Is then mixed with cryolite. Okay, cryolite ni gariskan penting. So what is cryolite? Cryolite is a substance that lower the melting point of aluminium oxide. Itu pentingnya cryolite. Kenapa bila dalam proses ni kena tambah cryolite? Kalau kamu tengok gambar kat sini, tengok substance X campur cryolite. So kalau soalan tanya, why needed to add cryolite into the uh, bauxite supaya dia boleh lower the melting point of uh, aluminium oxide. Actually aluminium oxide the melting point is 2000. Uh, 70 degree Celsius dia boleh lower sampai 1000. Bila cepat, uh, bila cepat dia melebur cepatlah proses tu ber laku. Kalau tak mengambil masa yang lama lah nak tunggu sampai 2070 degree Celsius. Okay. Alright. So bila dia dah letak cryolite, the mixture is then heated to melt and then the molten aluminium oxide is electrolyzed using carbon as electrode. So sebelum sebelum dia masukkan dalam bekas ni tadi, dia meltkan dulu tambah cryolite. Baru masukkan dalam tu. Ataupun kalau dalam gambar ni dia masuk sekali ni. 
Okay, next. Molten aluminium oxide, so dia uh, consist ada free moving aluminium and oxide ion. Nampak ni? Ada aluminium ion dan oxide ion. So, when electricity is passed through the molten aluminium oxide, aluminium ions are attracted to cathode. Betul tak? Betul tak aluminium ions attracted to cathode? While oxide ion attracted to the anode. Okay, tengok. So, at anode, kita ada aluminium ion. Aluminium oxide kan dengan oxide. So, yang mana akan pergi anode? Anode ni positif terminal ke negatif terminal, guys? Elektrolisis ni, positif or negatif terminal, anode? Respond please, and not. Positive or negative terminal? And not, and not, and not. And not is positive terminal. So, kalau positive terminal yang yang akan discharge adalah oxide. While cathode adalah negative. So, yang akan datang sini adalah Al3+. So, tengok add and not. Oxide ion uh, discharge by what? Kalau dekat anode dia release ke receive? Dah bagi tahu. Kalau anode mesti anode mesti release ke receive? Release. Very good. So release electron to form oxygen molecule. So oxide ions undergoes what? If release mean undergoes? Kalau release means dia undergoes apa? Release, okay, very good. Oxidation. Oxidation, Ah, uh, Evina. So, half equation is what? Oxide, O2 minus, release electron, produce oxygen gas plus 2E. And then kita balance kan. Okay, 2, so 2, oh sorry, 4E sini. 4, baru cukup. Okay, next. So, oxygen gas release at anode will react with carbon electrode to produce carbon dioxide. So, oxygen here release at anode akan react dengan carbon electrode. So, equation dia akan jadi oxygen gas release react dengan carbon akan jadi CO2. Alright. The anode is corrod slowly. Okay, anode ni akan corrod slowly and must be replaced from time to time. Kenapa Kenapa dia akan setiasa korot? Sebab lama-lama carbon uh, elektrod ni dia asyik bertindak balas dengan oksigen kan lama-lama dia akan terhakir. So kena setiasa ganti. Now and not settle. So ketok kita tahu Al3+. So aluminium ions are discharged by kalau ketok receive ke release? Re? Receive. Very good. Okay. So aluminium ion undergoes what if receive? Undergoes re reduction. Perfect. So half equation is Al3 plus plus E then akan jadi Al3 here. Settle. So liquid aluminium. Liquid aluminium ni is the product here. Is denser than electrolyte and will be sink. Okay, at the bottom and flow out to a large container. So, mana kita tengok based on the diagram here. Okay, now this one latihan. Kita buat sama-sama, okay. Alright. So, ini adalah electrolysis or, or, or extractions of uh, metal oxide yang position ni adalah higher. So, yang ni kita guna aluminium kan? Aluminium oxide. Alright, so now substance Z. Substance Z mana substance substance Z? Okay, substance Z adalah carbon. Cikgu dah kata substance Z carbon. Substance Y also carbon. Okay, W. Sorry. Kita guna X dulu. So, X adalah apa ni? Sebelum proses berlaku, so what is uh, X? Plus cryolite. So, X adalah apa tadi? Aluminium is the product sayang. So X ni apa? First thing yang kita letak sekali apa? Aluminium. Aluminium what? X. Okay very good. Aluminium oxide. Al2O3. Dalam keadaan molten okay. Molten. And then W adalah liquid. 
aluminium. Dia dah jadi aluminium. Okay, next. Alright, W, X, Y, Z. Which one is anode? Kalau kamu tengok diagram ni dah ada, dah ada charge dah. So, boleh tahu dah which one become anode? Y ke Z? Anode. Anode is positive Z, very good. And then cathode adalah Y. So, apakah reaction yang berlaku dekat anode guys? Anode. Anode dah bagi tahu banyak kali. Anode will release electron. So the reaction is what? Oxidation. Perfect. Oh, very good pandai. Okay while Y ni dia duduk dekat ketot. So dia will receive electron. So the reaction is reduction. Okay now write the ionic equation for the reaction at anode. So at anode tadi adalah Siapa yang pergi anod tadi? Al3 plus dengan O2 minus. Which one will go to anod? Yang mana akan pergi anod? Al3 plus ke O2 minus? Sebab anod adalah uh, positif terminal. So yang akan pergi anod adalah Oh very good. Pandai. O2 minus. So O2 minus Release elektron akan jadi O2 plus 4E. E Awal ketok adalah Al3 plus plus E become Al3 here. Okay, why we need to add cryolite into X, into aluminium uh, oxide? Apa jawapannya? Because apa? Two? Two... Lowering the melting point of aluminium oxide from 2070 degrees Celsius to 1000. Okay, which substance WXYZ yang mana kena selalu ganti? W, X, Y, Z. Yang mana kena selalu ganti? X ke Y? Tengok balik nota yang tadi. Tengok ni. Yang mana kena selalu ganti? Anode ke ketot? Which carbon yang kena uh, you, kena ganti time to time? Anode or ketot? Anode. Very good. So kalau anode, kalau anode dia adalah uh, Z. Betul? So Z. Okay Z. Kenapa? Why need to replace time to time? Dia akan corrode. It will corrode slowly. Kenapa dia selalu corrode? Because. Because of what? Because oxygen will React with, react with apa guys? Kenapa uh, Z ni selalu corrode? Why carbon at Z usually akan corrode slowly? Because oxygen yang release dekat anode ni tadi, dia akan react dengan apa? Panda Elvin, react with carbon. To form what? To form? Tadi dah explain to form what? When carbon react with oxygen and anode, what happen? Carbon dioxide. Perfect. Very good. Settle. Settle for electrolysis. Okay, now kita pergi seterusnya. Okay, boleh? Dah salin jawapan masing-masing. Teacher. Yeah. Uh, see, they want the uh, name of the product. But you just write the Z and Y on that. Okay, thank but you. The name of the product anode apa tadi? Anode is, thank you. Ada juga yang perasan, okay. Alright, so anode, the name of the product. So anode tadi apa? Oxygen. Ketok tadi adalah? Aluminium. 
Alright, thank you sebab perasan. Orang lain tak perasan pun. Okay, now. Now kita pergi kepada discuss the effect of the extractions of aluminium from bauxite to the environment. Ha, ini mungkin soalan-soalan ni pun mungkin akan tanya. Dalam SPM, mungkin ada sedikit sebanyak. Okay. So the process of extractions of aluminium consume very high energy. So ini keburukan yang pertama. Dia akan uh, perlukan energi yang banyak. So electricity is needed to melt aluminium oxide and it generate by burning coal that release greenhouse gases. Okay. Yang kedua, they will release greenhouse gases. Yang tak baik lah ni, ni semua dia punya disadvantages. So during the process for the molten aluminium oxide, carbon dioxide is also produced which negatively affect the environment because kalau too much of carbon dioxide boleh affect the environment. Okay, yang ketiga, pertama need high energy. Kedua, release greenhouse gases. Ketiga, too much of carbon dioxide affect the environment. Okay, number four. So the process of purifying bauxite to aluminium oxide also produce bauxite residue in the form of red slug that is toxic in nature. Okay, hasilkan bahan toxic empat. Okay, so this residue has to be stored for the processing and can cause serious pollution. Okay, therefore as consumer we need to recycle aluminium to reduce the environmental pollution and minimize the high energy consumption in aluminium extraction. So sebenarnya banyaklah dia punya disadvantages of uh, extraction of bauxite. So ambil lah poin-poin ni supaya nanti kalau keluar soalan uh, mungkin soalan kebat dia bagi sini tiga markah ke uh, kamu ada jawapan dia. Okay habis untuk uh, extractions of aluminium oxide. Now kita pergi kepada the second method extractions of iron. So kalau extractions of uh, aluminium oxide tadi kita menggunakan kaedah elektrolisis. Extractions of iron kita guna apa guys? Apakah yang kita gunakan untuk extractions of iron? As one please extractions of iron kita guna apa? Tadi kita dah belajar kan extractions of metals from its ore ada dua kaedah. So kalau extractions of iron ni guna which kaedah? Which method? Okay reduction. Reductions by carbon. Betul? Tadi kita dah belajar dekat depan kita ada dua kaedah reduction by using carbon. So tulis kat sini. Tulis besar-besar supaya, supaya nampak. Reduction by using carbon. Electrolysis kita guna untuk more reactive metal. Means yang atas daripada carbon. Kalau below carbon semua guna reductions by using carbon. Clear? Okay kalau macam ni kan. Kalau macam ni. So carbon dekat sini. Carbon cikgu circle kan. So yang above dari carbon ni Lepas start daripada potassium untuk aluminium kita guna elektrolisis. So below carbon, zinc sampai bawah ni we use reduction by using carbon. Alright. Boleh ya? Jingi are you okay? Boleh Jingi? Okay what is the reactivity series of metal? Okay reactivity series of metal is an arrangement of metal according to the reactivity of their reaction towards or with oxygen to form Oxide. Maksudnya kalau logam tu makin atas makin cepat dia bertindak balas dengan Lagi cepat dia bertindak balas dengan oksigen. Contoh dekat sini, kalium. Kita pernah rasanya buat nanti kat tampak. Kamu tahu tak kalau kalium ni dalam lab dia akan simpan kat mana guys? Guys kalau kalium dalam lab dia akan letak kat mana? Kalium, sodium dia akan simpan dekat mana? Pandai je Azwan, paraffin oil. Kenapa dia kena letak dalam paraffin oil? Supaya dia tidak expose kepada air. Dia tidak akan terdedah kepada udara. Sebab once kalau dia terdedah sahaja dekat udara walaupun sedikit dia easy to react. Nanti boleh berlakunya uh, reaction. Kalau kalium tu kecil tak apa. Kalau kalium tu jenis besar boleh menyebabkan uh, letupan. Alright. 
So kamu tengok sini daripada agentum going up to potassium reactivity of metal towards oxygen increase. Okay sambung seterusnya. Alright how to predict the ability of a metal to remove oxygen from another metal oxide. How to predict the ability of metal. Okay kebolehan sesuatu logam itu to remove oxygen from another metal oxide. Nah, kita nak tahu, okay, metal ni boleh tak uh, remove oksigen daripada metal oksid yang ni? So, kita kena tengok based on what? A more reactive metal is able to remove oksigen. Okay, garis kanan, more reactive metal is able to remove oksigen from metal oksid of less reactive metal. Okay, a more reactive metal will gain oxygen to form metal oxide and undergoes what? Kalau dia gain oxygen, mean dia undergoes apa? Undergoes oxidation. Pandai. Okay, cikgu bagi satu contoh supaya kamu nampak. Kita tengok lah, kita ambil more reactive metal, contoh cikgu ambil MG. Sebab dia kata more reactive metal able to remove oxygen from metal oxide of less reactive metal kan. And then cikgu ambil CuO as a less reactive metal. So bila Mg react dengan copper to oxide, the product apa? What is the product guys? Magnesium metal react with copper to oxide. The product ah, uh, What is the product? What is the product? Okay, MgO plus panda MgO plus Cu. Kamu dengar more reactive metal in this case is Mg will gain oxygen betul to form metal oxide betul and undergoes oxidation. Oxidation number of metal increase ke decrease kalau kalau dia undergoes oxidation? If the um, substance undergoes oxidation maka oxidation number dia increase very good. Tak percaya kamu tengok sini ya. Mg, Mg. What is the oxidation number for Mg? What is the oxidation number for Mg? Mg? Mg. Kosong sebab Mg adalah atom. Tapi bila jadi MgO berapakah uh, oxidation number dia? Plus 2. So dia bertambah daripada 0 to plus 2. Alright. And oxide... <laughs> Ha, lepas react baru plus tu Iman Hati-hati jangan salah Okay now An oxide of less reactive metal Dia akan uh, Release oxygen lah Okay dia akan lose oxygen To form apa? To form metal Okay tengok eh Oxide of less reactive metal Dia akan kehilangan oxygen To form metal and undergoes what? Kalau hilang oxygen so dia undergoes Reduction. Okay. Oxidation number of metal in the metal oxide decrease ke increase? Uh, oxidation number of metal. Okay. Kita fokus kepada metal. So kalau kamu tengok sini kita fokus kepada metal dia that is copper. So copper before reaction is plus 2. After reaction dia become 0. So oxidation number decrease from plus 2 to 0. A more reactive metal, a more reactive metal reduce the oxide of less reactive metal and acts as what? Kalau dia undergoes oxidation, maka dia act as, ha, macam tu. Kalau dia undergoes oxidation, automatic dia act as what? What agent? Reducing ke oxidizing? Panda acts a reducing agent. A less reactive metal oxide oxidize and act a, okay kalau kita tahu metal oxide ni undergo reduction so dia adalah oxidizing agent. Okay a less reactive metal, apa? a less reactive metal, less reactive metal cannot Remove oxygen from oxide of more reactive metal. Maksudnya, copper, copper tak boleh nak remove oxygen from 
from magnesium oxide. Contoh cikgu bagi macam ni, copper. Dia nak remove oksigen daripada MgO ni. So this one tak boleh berlaku. Sebab MgO ni is more reactive compared to copper. Tapi kalau Mg dengan CO boleh because Mg is more reactive. Boleh faham? Bolehkah anda faham apa yang saya cakap? Can you understand? Alright. More reactive metal can remove oxygen from uh, less reactive metal oxide. Okay now, give name of the ore in which iron is extracted. Apa nama ore untuk iron? Ada tak dekat depan-depan tadi? Cuba cari muka surat. Ada cikgu jumpa tadi. Muka surat uh, 63. Apa nama ore for iron? Hematit panda evina. Okay. Give chemical name and formula for this ore. Apa formula untuk iron oxide? Iron 3 ke iron 2? Hematit ni. Hematit ni adalah iron 3. So formula dia, chemical name dia apa? Iron 3 oxide. Formula dia adalah Fe2O3. So name the equipment in which extractions of iron is carried out. So kalau untuk kes ini, kita menggunakan blast furnace. Ha, nanti kamu tengoklah macam mana rupa blast furnace. Alright. Okay, ini adalah blast furnace. Okay, sebelum kita sambung, cikgu nak tunjuk video dulu boleh tak? Kita stop ni sekejap. Okay, cikgu stop present yang ni sekejap. Cikgu nak tunjuk video dahulu. Tengok dulu. Tak faham tak apa, tengok dulu. Ah, ni iron. Action of iron from its oxide. Dengar tak? In a blast furnace, oxide ores of iron, after concentration through calcination or roasting, are mixed with limestone and coke, are fed from its top. Hot air is blown from the bottom of the furnace and coke is burnt to give temperature up to about 2200 Kelvin in the lower point itself. The burning of coke therefore supplies most of the heat required in the process and will be oxidized to CO. The CO and heat moves to upper part of the furnace. The upper part, the temperature is lower and the iron oxides, Fe2O3 and Fe3O4, Coming from the top, are reduced in steps to FeO. Limestone is also decomposed to ClO, which removes silicate impurity of the O as slag. The slag is in molten state and separates out from iron. Thus, the reduction reactions taking place in the lower temperature range and in the higher temperature range depend on the points of corresponding intersections in the delta R G minus versus T plots. These reactions can be given as follows. At 500 to 800 Kelvin, lower temperature range in the blast furnace. 3 Fe2O3 CO plus CO gives 2 F. Okey dah. Kita tengok uh, ni je. Apa panggil? Kita tengok dia punya proses je. Equation-equation tu tak kisah cikgu tahu. Nanti kamu pening pula. Okey kita sambung. Alright. So kamu dah tengok video tadi. Ini adalah diagram uh, process of extractions of iron eh. Ini iron. Yang tadi gambar aluminium tu yang tadi yang ada celup-celup guna carbon tu. Yang ni iron. So benda yang pertama for, for the first step yang dia masukkan adalah iron ore, coke dengan limestone. So tiga benda ni wajiblah. 
At the same time kita ada hot air dekat sini. Alright. Lepas tu kita ada uh, hole for iron and hole for slag. Okay now next. Name the three raw materials that fed into the top of the blast furnace. So ada tiga benda. We have iron ore, coke dengan limestone. So for your information, apakah major component in coke dia adalah carbon. So major component of coke adalah carbon. So name the important substance in coke. So jawapannya adalah carbon. Coke is a charcoal made from coal. It is the main source of carbon element. Okay, name the important substance in hot air which enter the blast furnace. So, nampak ada hot air. So, agak-agak apakah gas yang penting dalam hot air ni? Supaya the uh, pembakaran boleh berlaku. Oxygen. So, oxygen support burning. Heated oxygen will increase the rate of reaction. Betul Iman. Very good. Okay. Describe what happened when hot air enters the blast furnace. Kamu nampak kan hot air daripada bawah ni akan masuk ke atas. Betul? Tadi nampak kan dia panas kan? Okay. Dalam masa yang sama dekat atas ni tiga benda ni akan masuk daripada atas. Hot air daripada bawah. Okay. Yang pertama carbon. Okay. In the blast furnace a series of chemical reaction take place. Okay. Yang the first step is carbon. Carbon daripada coke tadi akan react dengan oksigen to form carbon dioxide. Okay, yang pertama. Yang kedua, ada, ada chemical equation tak? Oh tak ada. Okay, carbon akan react dengan oksigen to form carbon dioxide. Okay, cikgu tulis saya C akan react dengan oksigen hasilkan CO2. So this reaction is highly exothermic and will release a large amount of heat. Menyebabkan the temperature akan naik sampai 1900. So chemical equation okay satu. Second, carbon dioxide yang ni tadi, this carbon dioxide akan react lagi dengan carbon untuk form carbon monoxide. Dua. One, two. So carbon monoxide, why carbon uh, monoxide is very important because carbon monoxide is strong reducing agent. Sebab kita nak reduce uh, ni lah uh, iron tree oxide ni. So dia akan reduce iron tree oxide to become molten iron which flow down to the bottom of the furnace. So kalau soalan tanya why we need to produce carbon monoxide because dia adalah strong reducing agent. So bagaimana persamaan dia? Kamu tengok iron tree oxide bertindak balas dengan carbon monoxide jadi iron and carbon dioxide. So from here kamu nampak ya untuk Fe oxidation nama dia plus 3 after the reaction become 0 means Fe undergoes what? Daripada plus 3 jadi 0. Iron 3 plus 2 0 means iron akan jadi apa ni? Iron tree oxide undergoes what? Reduction. Very good. Okay kalau kamu tengok carbon monoxide kamu tengok carbon dia plus 2 after the reaction jadi plus 4. Boleh tahu tak kena macam mana cikgu tahu ya C ni plus 2 C C ni plus 4. Tahu tak macam mana nak cari? Macam mana kamu tahu oh C oxidation nama dia plus 2. C yang sebelah sini plus 4. Tahu tak macam mana nak cari? Macam mana kamu tahu? Kalau yang ni kita tahulah sebab ada Fe3 plus so we know lah O3 plus. Tak tahu. Okey bagus Hanifuddin. Tak tahu cakap. Okey tengok ya cikgu tunjuk. So kita ingat balik pandai zero C total charge. So CO equals to zero. Betul sebab dia adalah compound. So C tak tahu O adalah berapa? O adalah negatif 2 equals to zero. So C here is plus 2. So betul. Same goes to this one. C plus negative 4 equals to zero. Because O is negative 2 ada dua. So negative 4. So C equals to plus Ha, nampak ya ni Fudeh macam mana boleh dapat berapakah oxidation number bagi carbon in carbon monoxide and uh, oxidation number for carbon in carbon dioxide. So iron tree oxide is reduced because oxidation number of iron tree oxide decrease from plus 3 to 0. Ni tahulah kan sebab iron ni is atom so dia 0 lah. 
So iron trioxide is an oxidizing agent because they undergo reduction, so automatic they oxidizing agent. Carbon monoxide is oxidized because oxidation number increase from plus two to plus four. So carbon monoxide dia adalah reducing agent. So at high temperature, carbon reduce iron trioxide to become iron. Ni chemical equation penuh. Bagaimana iron trioxide bertindak balas dengan carbon dapat carbon uh, iron dengan carbon dioxide. So carbon undergoes what guys? Carbon undergoes uh, plus two to plus four. So carbon undergoes oxidation pandai. Because kalau kamu tengok chemical equation yang dekat sini carbon before reaction tak ada oxygen after reaction ada oxygen. So carbon is a reducing agent, iron tree, oxide, lose oxygen to form carbon. So carbon reduce iron tree, oxide. So iron tree oxide pula undergoes reduction sebab dia lose oxygen. At the same time, iron tree oxide as a oxidizing agent. Carbon gain oxygen to oxygen from iron tree oxide, iron tree oxide has oxidized. Okay, next. Okay, hampir habis. You ke hampir habis? Macam banyak lagi je. <laughs> okay, sikit lagi. Kita habiskan yang ni. Alright, next. Okay, now. Give chemicals name and formula for limestone. Okay, apa nama uh, chemical untuk limestone? Anyone? Limestone, limestone. Kita selalu guna dalam lab. Apa tu limestone ni apa? Mesti tahu kan? Apa tu limestone? Pandai Ca, CO3. Nama dia adalah kalsium karbonat. Ah tadi dalam uh, last furnace ni kita ada tambah uh, limestone kan? Okay, kita tengok apa pula kegunaan limestone dalam proses ni. So the limestone is to remove the impurity such as silicon dioxide. Si2. Silikon dioxide. Ah, so kalau soalan tanya why we need to add uh, limestone ataupun calcium carbonate to remove uh, impurity seperti uh, silikon dioxide. Pasir lah ni. So limestone decompose. Okay ni uh, cerita pasal limestone pula. Tadi dekat atas kita cerita pasal uh, coke iaitu yang ada carbon dengan iron. Betul? Iron trioxide. Sekarang kita cerita pasal limestone. Apa bagaimana limestone itu berfungsi dalam this process. So limestone will decompose by heat to produce calcium oxide and juga carbon dioxide satu. Second, the impurities in iron such as silicon dioxide, this one, akan react dengan calcium oxide to produce uh, slag ataupun nama dia calcium silicate. Slag. Okay, ini adalah slag. Okay, the slag akan flow down to the bottom of the furnace and floats on the top of the molten iron. So, the molten iron and slag are tapped separately. So, kalau based on the diagram here, kamu akan nampak. Okay, kamu akan perasan. Okay, slag dekat sini. So, dia akan separate asing lah. Iron dekat sebelah sini. Dia tak akan campur. So, kita tengok slag ni pun dia tak boleh buang simply-simply. Ada juga kegunaan slag ni. Okay, mana tengok kegunaan slag. Okay, slag ni berfungsi. The slag, the slag is used to making road untuk buat jalan dan dalam masa manakala the molten iron ni made into cast iron. So, kalau soalan tanya what is the, uh, apa kegunaan slag used in making road ataupun buat tapak rumah pun boleh. Tapak binaan. Contoh building kan, nah, dia punya base dia akan pakai slag ni. Okay. Boleh ya? Okay, sikit lagi. Hampir habis. Reductions of metal oxide by other metals. Can metal oxide reduce by other metal? Ah, tadi dah bincang dah. Less reactive metal oxide can be reduced by more reactive metal when heated together. Example, Mg dengan copper tu. Oxide. So Mg because they're more reactive, dia boleh uh, reduce copper from its copper to oxide. Akan jadi MgO plus Cu. Kalau macam ni boleh because Mg is more 
reaktif. Ha, contohnya dalam termite reaction. Kita tengok awak is termite reaction. So termite reaction is reaction between iron tree oxide dengan aluminium. Okey tengok eh. Iron tree oxide dengan aluminium. So agak-agak what is the product? Bila iron tree oxide dengan aluminium. So this reaction can occur because aluminium is more reactive compared to iron. So what is the product guys? Agak-agak apa produk dia? When iron tree oxide react dengan aluminium. Agak-agak what is the product? Apa produk dia? Respon, apakah produknya? Iron tree oxide dengan aluminium. Apakah produk dia? What is the product? Respon, uh, aluminium oxide dengan aluminium oxide campur iron. Pandai. Okay, so kita balance kan lah. Okay, kita balance kan. Nanti kita balance kan. So, produk dia ni. So, L2 sini tu. Iron tu. Okay, settle. Okay, termite reaction. Kalau soalan tanya what is the termite reaction? Is the reaction between iron tree oxide dengan aluminium to produce molten iron. Aluminium is above iron. Betul? Okay. In the reactivity series. So, aluminium can extract iron from its ore. The product are aluminium oxide, iron and a large amount of heat. The reaction used for the termite welding often used to join rail track. Then the following equation kat sini dah ada pun. So what are other examples of metal that can be extracted from metal oxide? So contoh-contoh lain adalah chromium dengan titanium. Akan redu uh, reduce by more reactive metal. So yang tambahan kat sini kamu kena tahulah what is termite reaction. So kalau kalau disebut okay write the equation for termite reaction. Kalau kamu tak tahu what is termite reaction so macam mana kamu nak tulis equation. So ingat termite reaction is reaction between iron tree oxide dengan aluminium. Very simple. Okay habis. So exercise yang pertama mari kita buat sama-sama. Yang kedua ni as a homework. So yang pertama Metals occur as ore in the earth crust. They exist as oxide, carbonate and sulfide. They must be extracted before they can made into other substance. 